Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Lance Philp, I'm the tech manager for East Coast Ghost and I'm going to demonstrate today um, EMF pumps and their relationship to EMF meters and how the EMF meters work differently and how the pumps work differently. The first pump we're going to discuss is the one I have right here in the middle. It's the Obelis X which most people think about as a speech device because that's what they know it as. They don't realize that in energy mode it produces a low level EMF signal. The one on the left is the Paracorder 667 by Moditronic, and this unit is also an EMF pump, which pumps, uh, which produces a little bit higher level of EMF, and also has an ion uh, detector in it, or an ion sensor. We're not really concerned about that today, we're just going to deal with the EMF side of it. Now, the last one I have here on the far right is the EM pump made by Digital Dowsing. It's no longer available, but I'm going to... Uh, show it because it really is a great unit. It's very powerful. Um, and we'll go through there. I'm going to take, remove these two and we'll start with the Oblis, uh, with the Oblis X. It's already on in energy mode. Okay. Now the first thing I'm going to do is bring over a Dr. Gauze meter. And if you notice that Dr. Gauze gets very little signal from it. Only at a very close level is it producing between a, basically a 2 milligauss reading, which really isn't much. It's not even enough to get the Dr. Gauze unit to turn on the audible alarm. Now just to confirm that, we're going to go in with the K2 meter. Now when the K2 meter gets there, and it's the same thing, it's showing between, between 0 and uh, 2.5 and occasionally spiking up slightly, but it's basically in the same range as what Dr. Gauz was showing us. Now, we'll go to the next, which is the Melmeter. And with the Melmeter, it's not even reading at all. As you see, it's a 0.0, .0 reading. And there's a reason for that, which I'll get to in a second. Um, but as you can see, it's not reading anything on the millimeter. And the, now I'm going to also bring out the X-Tech meter, which a lot of people have seen on show on the various shows. Um, some people call it the spare meter or the uh, A22A. There are different versions of it out there. We've seen it on you know used on some of the TV shows. And again, it's showing less than a less than a milligauss reading. And then I'm going to bring out one more which is the tri-field meter. Let me grab that. And we're going to put that into... Let me show that here. Now, right now I have it set in the magnetic range from 0 to 3. As you can see, it's in a very low... It's at 3, basically. Now, if I drop it in the 0 to 100, same thing. It's right about 3 is what you're getting with the uh, tri-field meter. If anybody can see that. But now we're going to bring out the next one. I'm going to turn this one off. And bring out the next um, EM, EM pump. And again, this is the power quarter 667. I'm going to put it down here. Okay. I'm not worried about the ion uh, sensor there. But right now I'm going to bring the Dr. Gauze. As you can see with the Dr. Gauze, you can hear it. What the power recorder does is it puts out, e, uh, it pumps EM on a sporadic signal. On, off, on, off, on, off. As you see, as you get closer, it's a much higher signal. Just to give you um, what it would be. I'll show you, bring the K2 over to it. And again, the K2 is reading... The, see, the Dr. Gauze only goes up to 10 milligauss, which is why it was pinning. Now, the K2 goes 20 and above. Now, it's reading here between 0 and 10 milligauss, which is about right. It's probably putting out close to a 10 signal. Now, we'll bring the Sperry meter over. And... The spare meter 
isn't picking up anything. And there's a reason for that. What it's actually just doing right now is showing the natural EMF. And you'll find that you're going to get the same thing on the millimeter. It's giving me a 0 to 2 range right next to the, e to the uh, EM pump. Or I should say the power quarter. Now we will bring out the tri-field. And we're going to put the tri-field right next to it. And you can see the tri-field is bouncing up and down. Because again, it's, it's a pulsating type of EMF. It's not a steady. So, I'll give you that. Now we're going to bring out the one that I like to, to using the most. And that is the EM pump. And first thing I'm going to do is put it right here in the center so you can see it. First thing you'll notice is a green LED. That LED is going to change color. It's going to go from green to blue to red. And what it does is it starts to lower in, e in EMF and gradually raises. It gets to a high point. It turns blue and it will transition to red where it, it gives a huge jolt of EM and then back to green. Now, to give you an idea, the meters that I have moved off camera are already reacting to it. So I'm going to first bring over the... I'm going to let, let the unit cycle, okay, go to red. I'm going to put the, hopefully you can see that. The green is on, and as you can see it's pulsating, it's at a low signal to high, okay. Hopefully you can see all that. Now it's starting to increase the intensity. It's blue LED, red LED full charge. Now back to green. And it's going to go back to its pulsating. Okay, we'll go through it one more time. Green, it's going to be a lower intensity. It's starting to pick up. When the light on the EM pump turns blue, it's a higher intensity. Then to red. So, we saw that. Now let's take a look at that on what it looks like on a millimeter. Okay. Millimeters getting readings, 8.7, up to 18, up to 22.1, up to 41.6 when it hit the red. Let me try to show that again. Whoops. Okay, let's see if I can do this again to kind of show you get the LED in there. It's going to start pumping at a lower rate, 1.3, 6.5, 13.4. Eighteen point two, and it goes right through the higher range. So again, we're in the green LED. I know you probably can't see because I'm blocking with the meter because it's kind of a large meter. But we're gonna switch to blue, up to twenty-five, up to forty point three. So as you can see, this is a really powerful uh, EM pump. Now. And just to give you one more example, we'll go to Dr. Gauze. Actually, no, not quite yet. Just gonna go with here to let's go to tri field. You can really see the tri field pulsating. All of a sudden, it's picking up in intensity. Turns blue, high reading, and watch when it turns red off the scale. So this is really a pump that, you know, if you're doing EVP sessions and you're trying, you know, to use it um, to basically feed the entity, you know, because in theory we believe that, you know, that they, the, they need energy to manifest. So you're putting out a large amount of energy here as in comparison to the other units I showed you. Now, to answer a question, why was the millimeter and the sparing meter are not reacting to the first two EM pumps. And the reason for that is the frequency level of the EMF. Okay? The Obelis X and the Modetronic are basically putting out EMF at 6.9 Hz. Well, the sparing meter and the, the Mel meter will filter the, that level of EMF out. And that's because that's what generally household items run off of. 
and we're not really looking for household items. We're looking for EMF that's, that's natural as opposed to man-made. So that's why the K2 will react to the Obelis X uh, in, in the energy mode and to the mode Etronic where the Melmeter and the Sperimeter will not react because, again, the, it's because of the, the frequency that's being pumped out. Now, just to give you an idea, I'm going to turn this off. We'll go back to the paracorder. Okay, we're going to put the power quarter here. And again, I'm going to put the millimeter here. Okay. And you're going to see we're getting nothing on the millimeter. Hopefully you can see that. Let me move this, let me move my mixing board out of the way. Hopefully I can move this over a bit. You see, we're getting nothing on the millimeter. Okay. But now look at the K2. The K2 is getting a reading of just about 10. So again, that's because the millimeter is filtering out the 6.9 hertz um, EM, or the EMF at 6.9 hertz, where your K2 is reading across that frequency level. So that's why if people who are using um, the meters next to each other you, you will get a spike on the K2 without getting it necessarily on the millimeter. And that's because they're built differently and they're looking for different types of, of different frequency of uh, EMF. So I hope that explained it. Now, there was a question that came up recently in one of the ghost groups I belong to about will these, will one meter make the other one react? Well, now, mind you, there is a set of lights on here, okay, and there is a current, but it's not enough really to make anything happen. So you can see here I'm moving this all around, and nothing is reading on, on the millimeter. Conversely, conversely, as you can see, I'm moving this around, moving it around the, the uh, K2, and we're getting nothing. So realistically, the meters should not react to each other. Um, you know, they, they just should, they shouldn't react to each other at all. You know, same thing, you know, with different meters. Um, again, they, they just shouldn't react. I mean, it's that simple.